Hey, thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today we're going to work on the initial page to our My Favorite Things art journal. So I'll show you how I did my page and maybe it'll give you some ideas for what you might want to do for your page. And let's get started and have some fun. In the intro to this uh, challenge and this art journal playtime that we're going to do for our favorite things, uh, the first thing I was going to do for the first video is uh, what is my favorite thing to drink. And I went to go start in my book and I realized that where we really need to start is on the first page and make an intro page to our book. So the things that are, are my favorite things to drink are going to be on the next video and I'm going to start here because we need to do an intro to our book. When we are done and the book is full I'm going to do the final video will be on decorating the cover to your book so that way it'll be pretty it can sit out on your coffee table it can be um, something that you you know you put on your nightstand that you that it'll prompt you to pull it out and look at it by having a nice pretty decorated cover so that's going to be the very last thing so starting with the first thing we obviously need an intro because when you've got your beautiful cover to your book and you open it it needs to enter introduce what the book is about. So I'm going to do a little uh, page spread here for with the title of My Favorite Things. So for my first pages that are going to have the title of My Favorite Things, I went through my stash of magazine images and book images and things that I had in my file cabinet looking for maybe images to collage onto the page and I think I'm going to do a collage of all different kinds of things, a tea bag tag, some um, art supplies, maybe an owl, a fairy, birds in a nest, uh, sunflowers, um, just a little bit of everything. So I kind of went through my stash looking for things to collage on the page that will be kind of a mismatch of mismatch, mishmash. Hmm, I can't say that right, <laughs> mishmash of things that are going to be throughout the book that are going to be my favorite things. So first thing I'm going to do on this I think is prep the two pages with a nice thin layer of white gesso. So I'm going to just spread some gesso across these pages just to uh, give something to grab for the paint to grab onto because I am going to use some acrylic paints. So I'm going to go ahead and cover both of these pages with white gesso. Now that I have gesso on my pages and it's dry, I'm going to just start adding some acrylic paint and I'm not going to be uh, too specific about it. I'm going to be very random with my colors and just spread them around the page because there's going to be a lot of layers on my design and some of this will show, some of it won't show. So I'm not being too deliberate too specific. I'm just going different directions and I'm going to add some different colors and I'm going to do this with about oh I don't know three or four colors. And remember you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. This is just for inspiration and it's just what I'm choosing to do in my journal and the only reason I'm showing my process is maybe you're new, maybe you haven't done some of these techniques um, maybe it'll give you some ideas. Maybe you've uh, been doing it for a while, but you'll find a new tip or trick and something different. So that's why I'm showing it. But you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. Do your pages the way you want to do them. And I like how as I add my second color and I kind of brush over the previous color, how they, the first color is dry, but the two colors do combine, you know, one over the other and it makes a different tone. So I like to do one over the top. See how that one covered the other and it made a third color. So that's really kind of a fun thing to do. And I'm one that I, I don't wet my brush before I start. I use a very dry brush. That's just my thing that I like. I don't like a very wet brush. To me dry is easier plus you get the real sketchy kind of look on your on your page. So I'm adding my last color and I'm kind of making sure to go around and do a border and I want to show that when you have a dry brush and you just pull that paint down and pull that paint across 
And I'm just, it's kind of more like a, I'm flicking the paint. I'm flicking the, the bristles of the brush. See that what you get is that beautiful kind of a sketchy pattern to it. So that's what I'm doing is just taking my brush and dragging it across that paint and those dry bristles are creating a really cool looking texture. Next I'm going to use a paintbrush and Mod Podge and I'm going to start putting down some little bits of pieces of interesting paper in the background. This is just out of a magazine but I love the pattern on it. Uh, these were things that came out of the last video that I did. I said I'd save those scraps and reuse it. I like the splatters. I like this pattern that came out of a magazine image. I have paper pre-cut uh, basil paper border strips and I'm just going to randomly start putting those down on the page and I'm, I'm not going to put a lot of thought into it. It's going to be very, very random. Um, it's going to, the whole thing's going to end up being collaged. So I'm just wanting to do layers and I'm going to do some stenciling over this and keep adding some layers. So I'm just going to put these down in random places and adhere them down and put some Mod Podge over them. So I'm going to just play around with that. So there's my background, what I've put so far, and I've put some sheet music, some book text, some from really old books, things out of magazines torn out with some interest in them, and just kind of covered that background. Now I'm going to take some paint and my brush and I'm using a light color and I'm just going to add some paint and I'm lightly brushing it over and it's just to kind of let those still be seen but kind of mute them down and move them into the background so that's what I'm doing next is just putting a light layer of paint over this just to mute it down so here's what that looks like dried and now I'm going to bring in a stencil and a cosmetic sponge and some paint and just start doing a little bit of light stenciling and I'm just going to add that as the next layer. You just kind of play and add interest and layers all over your page until you're happy with how it looks. I like the green and the brown. And now I'm going to come in with just a couple of colors and use a palette knife and this layer is dry so I'm going to start spreading some paint and just pulling it down over my page. And I'm just trying to um, not cover up completely what's in my background but add to it and mute it down. I mean the point of all this is to just play and use your supplies and try new things. Maybe this is new to you. Maybe you've never seen this before by taking and pulling paint down. Maybe you have seen it a million times before. It's certainly not a new technique, but it gives a nice little bit of interest to the pages. And I'm still going to put focals, so a lot of this is still going to be covered up. Creating a background is just fun and freeing and it's just about experimenting and playing with your supplies that you have on hand and if you make a mistake don't panic because it can always be covered up if you didn't like any of this you could cover up the whole thing with acrylic paint or gesso and start again and do something different so if you don't like it either keep adding to it until you do like it or use some sandpaper and sand some away or cover it up and start again but it's just, it's mark making and it's playing and it's splattering and scrunching and making a background to put your focals on. So now I'm just going to take some plastic and scrunch it up and put it in a light color of paint and do some spouncing onto it because I want to now tone this all down a little bit and when you do that, you can kind of still see what's behind it, what you put down first. 
but it just moves it to the background. Every layer you're adding on top is moving the layer before it behind it. So that's what I'm going to do is just play around and tone that down a little bit. I like it. So this is my background so far and I absolutely love how it's turning out. It looks, looks fun and interesting. And now I'm going to take a bunch of little focally things. So I have vintage postage stamps of all kinds and I have magazine images and things that I want to add. Here's a bird. Um, I showed you before I had pictures of art supplies. I've got this nifty old vintage key. Um, this looks like a photo of a cabinet card. So I'm going to just lay these all out. I'm going to tear them and rip them and lay them out until I get them in a collage way that I like and then I'll show you. I've trimmed out pieces of magazine and book images, all different kinds of things to put on this page and I've laid it all out on top of each other to do my collage and that's what you kind of have to do with collage. You lay it out first and then you know which things you have to adhere down first to put the next thing on top of it and so on. And so that's what I'm going to do now is to Mod Podge these things down to the page and then this was a magazine image of uh, fingers holding a tea bag and I cut them out, I poked holes in it, I took one of my favorite tea bags, I threaded the tea tag through the top and then I tied it to the top half of an actual tea bag. It's still even got some tea left in it which I love. That's really cute and I'm gonna collage those fingers up at the top here with my strings and my tea bag tag on there too. So I'm going to play around with laying down these images and you just uh, put matte gel medium down. For doing collage I either use Mod Podge or I like Tri Art Matte Gel Medium. And you just basically want to put a little bit underneath the image, a thin layer, lay your item down, and then put a thin layer over the top to seal it on. And that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to layer all my images one on top of each other and then come back and work on it some more. I'll show you when it's all glued down. So here are my collage images glued down and here's my fingers holding the tea bag tag and there's the tea bag and I've put it behind this image of this watercolor palette and a little nest on top. And then I took this paper, the paper and rolled it with my fingers to get it to be um, grungy and torn and it shows the paint underneath and just put down all the all the different elements and now I'm ready to move on to my next step. Okay for the next thing to add just a little bit more texture and dimension I'm going to use this stencil that looks like bricks. I'm going to lay it down right here and I'm going to use a palette knife and some modeling paste and I'm going to go over that stencil. Fill it in. Now I'm going to let that dry. While I'm waiting for that texture paste to dry, I'm going to stay away from it and try not to touch it. And I'm taking an Arteza brush pen and I'm using Crocodile Green. And I like to make shadows behind things, so I'm just going along the edge, like behind these leaves, right onto the page, and behind this sunflower image. I'm going to just go around and create a really nice cast shadow because when I put my lettering on the page it may cover this so I want to do this first and it's a great thing to do while my texture paste is drying. So see how that looks? You just brush along behind and you end up with a really nice, a nice shadow. These Arteza pens are great for that. And you can blend it out. 
so it kind of like disappears off in the distance. I love that. So I'm going to work on that around the edges of my um, items that I placed down, that I Mod Podge down or matte gel medium down. I'm going to put some shadows in, in different colors, and continue to let that uh, modeling paste dry. I just love those Arteza pens for making little shadows and adding some color here and there on your page. It's just makes your page really pop. Anyway, next I'm going to take this um, Bria Reese matte metallic texture paste and it is in a really dark gray. It's got a little tiny bit of silver metallic in it. And this is still wet, this uh, white texture paste over here that looks like bricks. But uh, while it's wet, I think I'm going to this looks like, to me, looks like um, stucco, you know, the stucco that goes between bricks. So I'm just going to take a little bit on a paintbrush and go in between these bricks and pat it in and make it look like stucco and then continue to let the whole thing dry. I have my faux mortar in between my bricks and now I'm letting those dry so I'm just kind of staying away from those. Now what I want to do is cover the whole thing. It's still a little bit too bright for me so I want to cover it with some watercolor and I'm going to use a uh, yellow ochre Daniel Smith watercolor. I'm going to take a an Arteza water brush and just pick up some of that watercolor off the stick onto my brush and I'm going to brush over my page. So I'm going to go over the images and everything and I'm going to go lightly where I want the color to stay and I don't want it muted. I'm going to go around those but everywhere else I'm just going to kind of do a little light light watercolor adding here to tone it down a little bit. Go for my little goldfish, my postage stamp because it's really really bright. See how it's really white? But if you go over it with some watercolor, it'll tone it down. So that's what I'm going to do now is just go over here, there, and everywhere and tone things down with some yellow ochre watercolor. So while waiting for that to dry, I just was adding some little touches like um, on the goldfish. I used some sparkly metallic uh, orange watercolor paint on the little whimsical fairy or angel. I did some stickles on her wings to make them sparkle. Just little piddly little things like that are things I like to add. And uh, now what I'm going to do, these are finally dry. And I love how the gray in between looks like mortar. And now for my white bricks, I'm going to take an Arteza brush pan in elephant gray. And I'm just going to color that white and do it real sketchy so it looks like bricks. Brush it across real lightly and make it look like real rough edge bricks. I love that. I do that a lot on pages. I like that brick stencil for that reason. Let's see, and now look how that looks like gray bricks. And now for a little more depth. I'm going to go in with another color of Arteza brush pen in gray. This one is the ash black and I'm going to just go over that top edge just to give it some more dimension. And really make them look like bricks. Cool. And I'm going to do that on this side too. And I have some uh, plaid mixed media transparent gel paint in a sepia brown. And I'm going to just use this on my finger, I believe. It is a gel. Actually, I'm going to put my plastic underneath so I don't get it on the next page. And I'm going to go around this edge just like this. I like that so much. I love that stuff. And I'm going to do a border that's sepia colored and border that in. 
kind of looks antiqued and if you don't have that paint and you uh, are having trouble finding that paint then you can take a brown or a sepia colored acrylic paint and mix it with a clear varnish, a matte varnish, or a glossy varnish either, depending on how you want it to look, and mix it more varnish than paint and you'll get a nice transparent gel paint like this. So I'm going to just do that and cover in my edges, take it out, show you what it looks like, see? It's pretty. You can do the same thing with uh, Tim Holtz Distress Inks. You can go around the edge and do it with Tim Holtz Distress Inks as well. So I love how this turned out. And now the only thing that's left to put on it are two things for me. Um, splatters, which I'm going to do very last, and my lettering. For lettering on this, I want to put my favorite things because it's the title page. When you open up the book, it's the title page, so it's just going to say my favorite things. And you could use rubber stamps and stamp it right on your page. You could use uh, random letters that you cut out of a magazine and make a ransom style looking lettering. You could use rub-ons. You could use paints. You could use whatever you want to do your lettering. And I, th I think what I'm going to use for my lettering is a Uniposca pen and a beige. I'm going to try that. I like doing hand lettering. Some people don't. Um, so just do whatever feels best for you. I'm going to come up here and do my letters and I really want these to stand out because they are the focal point of this page. The rest of it is just background. So I'm going to just do my own style of hand lettering. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I did my words and I did them in a cream color but it didn't show up enough so then I went back over it in black. And the final thing I did was to put my book into a cardboard box and use a silicone baster with some watered down black acrylic paint and I did my uh, splatters. I, li I like having splatters so I did that. And then I used this splotch stencil to make some circles and a big splotch. That splotch happened from my splattering and it went over that Victorian face, but that's okay. It's it's all right. I like it anyway. And the last thing I did was to add a punched out booked text flower. Um, actually, I did two of them, one up here and one down here. It kind of covers that um, mistake I made when I uh, splattered over the woman's face and then I tried to rub it off and it smeared. So it can be covered up and it's still okay. Mistakes happen. Move on. I like it. It still looks okay. And one final touch, I cut out a dragonfly and added it and then I took a little micron fine point pen and I doodled on these little dragonflies everywhere. That's kind of my signature thing. So that's, that is the completed book, or the completed page. So here is my title page to my book. So when you open up my book, it says my favorite things. I may go back over around these letters to make them pop out a little bit more. I think maybe I will use my cream color and go back around them again and um, make them pop out a little bit more. But anyway, I hope you had fun. I hope you maybe learned a couple of fun new techniques and I can't wait to see what you guys do with your initial pages in your book for your title of my favorite things in our book as we get started. And then the next video is going to be as we talked about in the um, introduction, I'm going to do a page on my favorite drink. So show me what you do and let's play together. I hope you had fun. Bye.